I think this is one of those situations where it's like the girls that get it, get it, and the girls that don't, don't. And I don't think I'm a girl that gets it. Is this another like white 20 something woman dealing with her white 20 something woman problems? Yes. As you can tell, I'm not that girl and I don't go anywhere. I don't do anything. This one, this book, she's, she's that girl. I, I get it. I fully get it. Hello, hi, my name is Hannah and welcome to this video. Today I'm very excited because I'm bringing you another reading experiment video. I've done two videos like this in the past where I read five sad books to see if they would make me cry and five of the most popular romance books. And today I'm going to be reading five books to see if I can become that girl. As I'm sure most of you probably know because you also spend way too much time on TikTok like I do, that girl is an aesthetic and like a lifestyle. I don't really know what to call it exactly, but like if you spend any time online, you know what that girl means. But for anybody who doesn't know, we're gonna go to my very trusted source, Urban Dictionary, to define who that girl really is. That girl is a girl or any gender that wakes up at 5 a.m., meditates, drinks smoothies, has showers every day, journals, eats only healthy food, goes to the gym every day, and is successful in many ways. And while I definitely have my own opinions and criticisms of it, um, like in my opinion, it is essentially just rebranded girl boss. <laughs> it's like girl boss for Gen Z. I do also find it incredibly fascinating that this aesthetic and lifestyle has been tied to like a specific genre um, and like reading list. So I did some extensive research for this video and by extensive research I mean I went on TikTok and looked up that girl books and looked through the tag for like two hours and from my research I discovered that that girl books are typically actually just self-help books but I despise self-help and self-improvement books and I will not read them and I was not going to make myself suffer through five of them for the sake of this video so I decided to go with the other main genre that is attached to the that girl aesthetic and that is literary fiction. One book on this list is actually non-fiction but it's not like a self-help book um, so I thought that it was still appropriate because I saw it recommended everywhere. You could definitely also categorize these with like the hot girl books or sad girl books. They definitely fit into that genre or that aesthetic as well but to me the whole hot girl sad girl thing is very much just like an off branch of the that girl aesthetic so you can call it whatever you want hot girl sad girl sad hot girl that girl I'm gonna call it that girl so I picked five of the books that I saw most frequently on the that girl books tag on TikTok so today we're gonna talk about all of these books and my thoughts on them and see how much they align with my own reading tastes and see what the whole that girl reading list is all about as always this video will have no spoilers for any of the books that I mentioned so if you've never read any of these you don't have to worry about being spoiled but before we get into reading all of the that girl books I want to remind you about this girl's reading journal <laughs> my reading journal the a clockwork reader reading journal is available at Barnes and Noble Amazon and other booksellers if you love reading and journaling and recording the books that you've read this journal is the perfect place to do that you can record up to 100 books there's space for you to make it artistic and creative so if you're interested in checking out the a clockwork reader reading journal the links to it are in my description box as always and a huge thank you to anybody who has purchased it and who has been sending me their pictures. I love seeing you all using the journal. It makes my heart so happy. But yeah, without any further ado, let's get into the five books I read to see if I could become that girl. All right, so the first that girl book that I read was My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfag. Otessa Moshfag is incredibly popular and I feel like you could include almost any of her books on a that girl reading list, but by far My Year of Rest and Relaxation is at the top of that list. If you don't know what this book is about, it follows the story of this woman in her mid-20s and she basically decides to take a year of rest and relaxation by essentially medicating herself to the point where she basically sleeps for an entire year. Do I look like that girl? Do I look like I'm hot enough to read Otessa Moshfag on the regular basis? Like if you saw me, would you assume that I read Otessa Moshfag? I feel like you would. I feel like this this look is it. I even have like a Monet and Frida Kahlo painting in the background, these posters. I just felt like this fit the vibe and this was like the right look. But as you can probably tell, this is not my room. This is my sister's room. She has way more of this aesthetic than I do. <laughs> anyway, My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfag. I've started it. So far, it's okay. I think this is one of those situations where it's like the girls that get it, get it, and the girls that don't, don't. 
and I don't think I'm a girl that gets it, which is fine. I don't have to get every single book, like that's okay. But I just, I really, I don't get this book so far. So far, she is just a terrible person, which I know is like kind of the point of the book. She's just like this super privileged white girl living in New York City who is dealing with like her family trauma or not exactly really dealing with her family trauma. The problem is she isn't really dealing with it and self-medicating and is just constantly on drugs. And honestly, based on that description, I feel like it should be fun to read. I feel like it should be really entertaining, but not gonna lie to you, I'm really bored. I feel about this book similarly to the way I felt about Normal People, where I feel like it just lacks depth. And again, I'm not finished with it, so when I finish it, I will let you know my final thoughts. But for now, I feel like it's just missing something, at least for me. Um, if, if you got something out of it, that's great. And sometimes like a book doesn't really have to have a point. Sometimes it can just be about something someone's life and experience and like it's just like an experience and that's it but that doesn't seem like the point of this book do you know what I'm saying like I don't think that's what a Tessa Moshbag set out to do like I feel like she's trying to say something I just feel like I'm missing something like I don't I don't know what I just feel like I'm missing something hopefully it gets better by the end I want to like it I want to like this book I want to be an Otessa Moshbag girly but for now I don't think I am which is really disappointing so anyway that's my three quarters of the way through check-in I'm gonna go finish the book and and come back and let you all know my final thoughts. But for now, not really feeling it. All right, hello. I have finished reading my year of rest and relaxation. Okay, um, thoughts. I think I like it a little bit more than I did when I was like almost at the end. The last quarter of it did bump it up like slightly for me, even though I do feel like the ending ending was a little bit, I don't wanna say rushed, just, um, it felt a little bit empty. But I feel like that's a critique I'd have of like the whole book overall. I feel like at times it just felt a little bit empty. Here's my thing. I get what the book is trying to do. And after like finishing it, I feel like I'm less confused about what the point was. Um, I feel like I kind of get the point now. I really liked the depiction of um, depression in this book. I feel like it was really accurate and really relatable a lot of the time and how she just like wanted to sleep her way through it and sleep it off. Like I also wish I could do that without, you know, like all the pharmaceuticals. <laughs> and so I feel like the book did a really good job of having that discussion of what depression feels like and what it feels like in the modern world um, for somebody like our main character. I liked the whole like, concept of the unnamed main character thing, very uh, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Like I just really like that as a concept. So I like when books do that. So those were definitely some aspects of it that I enjoyed. I just don't think that this book had a lot to offer me personally. The message is something that ultimately I already agree with and something that like is it really new to me? It's not something I've never read about before. It was delivered in a very unique way, in a very different way, but at the same time like the way we got there was just like for me personally kind of boring. Honestly I expected her to be more unhinged. She really wasn't that like unhinged and like crazy. Like I thought she was gonna do like terrible, terrible things. And do not get me wrong, she's not a good person. She's a really bad person and she's mean and she's honestly pretty racist and just like not a great person, but I thought she was gonna be like crazy. I just feel like we didn't go as deep with the analysis of this character as I was anticipating. Um, and so because of that, to me, it just felt a little hollow. Like I keep saying empty, but like that's really just how it felt to me. And again, I liked the discussion of like depression and mental illness and like how she is coping or not coping with that. Again, I felt like it was really accurate and it was also really realistic. I mean, to a more extreme level, but definitely something people experience. Like at times it was very much like a feminist critique of like the privileged pretty white woman who can get away with almost anything because of her social status and her status in society. Like that messaging obviously came through. I just feel like we could have gotten into it even more. I feel like this book is like really marketed as like super strange and like really out there. It wasn't that out there in my opinion. And like while the concept I think is like really cool, I just feel like it's not that weird and everyone describes it as like super weird. But I don't know, maybe this is just because I have understood the feeling of wanting to alienate yourself from everybody in society and spend an entire year sleeping. So to me, that's not like a weird feeling. <laughs> Despite the fact that that, like I could deeply relate to like a core aspect of this story. I just 
to be honest, found it really boring, but that's me personally. If you got a lot out of this book, that's great. I do think that she's a good writer. I wouldn't say I'd write her off as an author entirely. I feel like I do want to pick up some other books by Otessa Moshfag, but this one for me, in my opinion, is like a little overhyped. I just, I don't think it's as like strange and out there and weird as everyone makes it out to be. And I also don't think it's like some outstanding analysis of like depression and isolation or like a deep dive into the psyche of a morally gray main character. I would overall give this around like three stars. It's like 2.75 to three stars. We'll just say three stars. I think it was okay. I wouldn't read it again. And I also don't think I would heavily recommend this book, but at the same time I understand why people could enjoy it. Yeah, it just feels like a very like middle tier book. It's not something I'm gonna really think about that much again. All right, so the second book that I read was Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. Sally Rooney, I would say, is probably number one on the that girl fiction reading list. Like if you don't read Sally Rooney, you can't be that girl. <laughs> this book follows our main character, Frances, who lives with her best friend slash ex-girlfriend, Bobby. One day they're introduced to this married couple and the story is kind of about like these four characters and their relationships with one another. It's about an affair and how their relationships with each other affect everybody else's relationships. So that's essentially what this story is about. All right, so I'm about halfway through Conversations with Friends. I like it. <laughs> I'm genuinely shocked. If you've seen my review of Normal People in my sad books video, then you know that I expected to enjoy that book, but ultimately was very disappointed and I just didn't like it very much. But I did like Sally Rooney's writing, so I was very much still willing to give her another chance and read more of her books. And I did have the strongest feeling of all of her books that I would like Conversations with Friends the most, because just based on the premise, it seemed the most my thing. And I think I was right because, like I said, halfway through, I really like this so far. This is what I wanted from normal people in terms of like emotion and depth and like the conversation that the book is trying to have. This is what I was expecting. Is this another like white 20 something woman dealing with her white 20 something woman problems? Yes, but at the same time, I still think this book is very good. I think that it's doing a good job of telling the story that it sets out to tell. If it ends well, I might love this book. We'll see. I finished it. I like it. This book is everything I wanted normal people to be. I don't know how she started with this book, like how she debuted with this and then followed it up with normal people, which is essentially exactly the same book with a more boring plot and less compelling characters. And before you come for me, that's just my opinion. But this book is like essentially like the same thing conceptually. There are some scenes in here that are like copy and pasted into normal people. Like it's very much the same story and I feel like you're either gonna really like conversations with friends or you're really gonna like normal people and it really just depends on which one you like relate to more or just like vibe with a bit more. This is exactly what I was hoping for in terms of emotion, in terms of like character analysis, like where we're very much just inside the head of our main character who is just not doing the best and coping with life in some self-destructive ways, but it's still a very realistic depiction of what it feels like to be in your early 20s and um, the emotions that you experience during that time. And in this one, there were definitely aspects of it that felt very relatable to me and with normal people I really couldn't find anything that like held my attention with it but this one definitely had that plus there was the added like bonus that I could relate to certain aspects of Francis's character and even Bobby's character and I just really really enjoyed my time reading it and I liked the discussions she was having in this book and that was the other thing I felt like this book just went into so much more depth with the characters and their emotions and they were much more emotionally vulnerable and I don't mean like the characters themselves, I mean in the way she chose to approach the characters. Um, there was just more vulnerability in the writing, in my opinion. There were like some lines in here, I'm gonna find my favorite one and read it to you. This is a conversation that um, Bobby and Francis are having at one point. And she says she pronounced Lisa's name without any particular love or hatred, just a girl she had known. And for months afterwards, maybe forever afterwards, I was afraid that someday she might say my name that way too. Like that 
oh my god that hit so hard for me it it destroyed me it also very much gives me new year's day by taylor swift vibes like that line where she says please don't ever become a stranger whose laugh i could recognize anywhere it same same energy same energy as that line and that is one of my favorite taylor swift lyrics of all time so like oh my god i literally immediately ordered a physical copy of the book after i finished it because i was like i'm gonna have to go back through here and like tab certain pages mark things up and i'm so glad i'm so glad finally the sally rooney girlies cannot fully hate me because i understand i get you guys okay i get it this one this book she's she's that girl i i get it i fully get it i still do think that people do overhype her a little bit as an author she has a very specific like demographic and very specific audience for whom these books are just perfection and that makes sense and she knows what she's doing she knows her audience she knows who she's writing for and if this type of book is your thing i understand the hype with sally rooney and for me personally while i do like some books kind of in that genre it's not like my favorite thing to read so i think it's kind of going to be a hit or miss for me which is why i think this one really landed and normal people didn't really for me one of the critiques that i had about normal people was that i felt like it had like a very white feminist perspective or it was coming from a very like white feminist lens and i remember when i mentioned that in the video that i talked about it in somebody literally commented and said like how dare you call sally rooney a white feminist she's a marxist as if being a marxist changes your race uh, but anyway, <laughs> I'm very much aware of the fact that she's a Marxist. She talks about it in Normal People. I've watched interviews with her and I've seen her talk about it and it's very prevalent in conversations with friends as well. But those two things are not mutually exclusive. You can be a white feminist and also be a Marxist. You know how many people are Marxist but cannot conceptualize the idea of like intersectional feminism? It's very much an issue. But in my opinion, this book did a much better job in the way that it discussed feminism and class and Marxism particularly. Like it was more prevalent in this book for sure whereas that one with normal people it just felt more like surface level and also there were just like some themes in that book that like I just didn't vibe with and also felt way more white feministy than this book for sure again I never said Sally Rooney is a white feminist I said the book normal people gives me white feminist vibes that's what I said but also for your information you can be a Marxist and also be a white feminist like you can be a Marxist and also be racist like being a Marxist does not absolve you of any other like prejudiced opinion that you could have Anyway, my point is in this book, I much preferred the way that she discussed um, race, class, gender, sexuality. I feel like it went in depth enough, despite the fact that the book was not specifically about all of those things, or at least not directly about all of those things, even if they were underlying themes. It just felt more well-rounded and it felt more complete and like it was meant to be part of the story. So yes, with this book, I do understand the hype. I would recommend this over normal people personally if you're looking to read a Sally Rooney book and you have similar taste to me. We've read a lot of the same books and like a lot of the same books. Personally, I would recommend Conversations with Friends. I think it is the better of the two. I feel like it's the type of book that's going to stick with me for a little bit and I'm going to be thinking about it for a while after I've finished it. I will also say I definitely put a trigger warning on this book for self-harm. There are a couple scenes in there that are a little bit like graphic, so just be aware of that before you read it. Overall, I would solidly give this book a four out of five stars. I really did enjoy it and if you're looking to read some contemporary fiction about a woman in her early 20s just trying to cope with existing and relationships, friendships, what the line is between what a relationship is and friendship is and just every other thing that comes with just being alive, um, I would definitely recommend this book. I think it's worth your time. All right, next up I read My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I definitely say this one's more along the lines of like a sad girl book but I see it all over book talk and people definitely recommend it on their list of like hot girl books, sad girl books, that girl books. Like I've seen it everywhere. So I definitely wanted to include it on this list as well. I really didn't know much about it. And I mentioned this in the video as well, but I'll say it here too. Please check the content warnings with this one. Um, it's a really dark, uh, disturbing, difficult book to read because it's the story of a 15 year old girl who's being groomed by her 42 year old teacher. So it's, it's really, really awful. <laughs> This book is also in some ways like inspired by Lolita. Um, Lolita plays like a significant part in the story and it's kind of like Lolita but told from her perspective instead of the teacher's perspective. It's not like a retelling by any means, it's just a significant part of this story. So yeah, I was very interested to see how I was going to feel about this. 
Okay, so I finished my Dark Vanessa. It's actually the next day. I did not get to update yesterday because I went to bed. And to be honest, the book like deeply affected me. So I was just thinking about it a lot last night and I, I just couldn't stop. Um, I was honestly kind of tempted to reread it because it was just on my mind that much. And truly, I really liked it. I can't say that I had a good time reading it because it was really, really hard to read because it was so disturbing and um, there were scenes that were just utterly disgusting. But at the same time, ultimately, like I love what this book does and the message that this book has and i think it does an incredible job of executing its point and message with a lot of nuance with a lot of empathy and honestly from a perspective that i feel like we don't see very often while obviously a majority of this book is about um, grooming and what it is like for a young teenage girl who is experiencing something like that a lot of the story is also about being a teenage girl and the expectations that come with that, the pressures that come with that, and the way that the world treats you, the way men treat you when you're a 15 year old girl. I will also put a caveat on that. It is specifically the way men treat a white 15 year old girl, which is gonna be a very different experience than the experiences that non-white 15 year old girls will have or non-cisgender 15 year old girls will have. It's a very specific experience, but um, in some ways a very universal experience for anybody who was raised and socialized as a young 15 year old girl. <laughs> there were so many times when I was reading this where I just wanted to like take Vanessa and like shake some sense into her because I was like, girl, <laughs> this is not what you think it is. But at the same time, like, I remember what it feels like to be 15. I remember what it feels like to be 15 and manipulated by people in your life, especially men in your life. I think that this book does such a good job of showing you the perspective of a 15 year old and like where your mind kind of is at when you're that young. There was one line in here specifically that I just like cannot stop thinking about. And it's actually one that Strain says to her and it was so, awful to have him be the one to say this, but also so good um, because it really shows you how much nuance is in this book. I don't remember the exact line and if I can find it, I'll put it on the screen. He says something along the lines of like how she's more mature and she knows more at 15 now than she's going to know when she's like in her 20s. And that just like hit me and I, I could feel it on such a personal level and I just, I understand that feeling and it's just, so real. It reminds me of Nothing New by Taylor Swift, the how can a person know everything at 18 but nothing at 22 line. Because when you're young, you really do feel like you know everything. And by the time you're like 25, like I am now, I feel like I'm still a child. But when I was 15, I thought I knew everything. I thought I knew the world. I thought I could understand everyone and everything better than any adult ever could. And honestly, sometimes when you are that young, you have so much confidence, misplaced confidence maybe, but some sort of confidence that you don't have anymore when you become an adult. And sometimes people will come into your life and they will take advantage of that and use that against you the way that Strain does against Vanessa in this book. And it's heartbreaking to watch because when you're reading it when you're an adult, you don't understand why Vanessa is acting this way when she's 15. You're upset with her. You can rationalize everything that's happening to her and understand that it's wrong. But when you're 15 and you're going through something like that, it's not the same. You don't think about it the same way, especially when someone's manipulating you like this. And I just thought the book handled it so, so well. Also the parts of the book that take place in 2017, so like when Vanessa is like 32 now or something, she was in so much denial and she had repressed so much of everything that she had gone through as a self-preservation method. Like honestly, she was just trying to protect herself. And um, there's one quote in here that I just like keep thinking about too. She says, I can't lose the thing I've held onto for so long, you know? I just really need it to be a love story, you know? I really need it to be that. Because if it isn't a love story, then what is it? It's my life. This has been my whole life. Like that just, oh my God, it gives me chills again. Like it, it was so sad, but it's so true. Sometimes something so awful can happen to you and it can take up such a large portion of your life that you have to just lie to yourself. You have to deny every bad thing that happened because if you admit that it's real, it dismantles everything you've thought about yourself, everything you've thought about the world, everything that you've been through. And sometimes that is just so hard to cope with when you've dealt with such serious trauma. And oh my God, it was just so profound. It was so impactful. Um, I really liked the writing in this book. I thought it was very like concise and simple, but at the same time, quite beautiful. Like there are some lines in here that were just so painful, but 
so well done. Like there's another line in this book where she says, the excuses we make for them are outrageous, but nothing compared to the ones we make for ourselves. Like a lot of this book, I think focuses on the part that Vanessa plays in this relationship as well and her own role in this relationship. And I feel like a lot of the time we only get to see people who have experienced trauma as either victims or like heroes. And you never just get to see them be people. And in this book, I feel like you really just got to see Vanessa be a person, be messy, make bad decisions, be in extreme denial. And you get to see a very honest depiction of how much trauma can influence you and how much denial it can put you in. I can't say I loved this because that just doesn't feel right um, because it was so messed up. But at the same time, like I love what this book is doing, if that makes sense. I may not love like the actual experience of reading it, but I love what this book does. I feel like it very much takes a different approach to a lot of modern conversations around sexual assault and especially grooming. And at the same time, I think it also dismantles a lot of beliefs and stereotypes that people have about people who experience this type of trauma. The difference between this and A Little Life to me is that A Little Life sensationalizes the violence that's in there and the trauma that's in there. I don't think people understand how much that book just adds things in to upset you, to upset the reader, not to show you that this is a reality of someone's life, to build someone's character, to give you more of an understanding of who they are and why they make the choices they make. Those things are in the book to shock the reader. They're not in the book to further the character. But in this book, in My Dark Vanessa, every terrible thing that happens to Vanessa, every terrible thing she experiences or any of the other characters experience are in the book for Vanessa's sake. They are there to give you as a reader an understanding of Vanessa and who she is and why she's making these choices and why she thinks the way that she does. The point of this book is very much that things are not black and white for somebody who is experiencing this type of trauma. They are not necessarily going to rationalize it the way that somebody who's not in this situation is going to rationalize it. You as the reader objectively looking at Vanessa's situation, knowing that she's being groomed, knowing that she's being abused and hurt because you're looking at it from an outside observer's perspective. But Vanessa's in the situation. She's 15 and she's being manipulated. And then she's 32 and in so much denial from all of the trauma that she's experienced that she can't even accept what has happened to her because that means her entire reality will change. So every terrible graphic scene that's in here is in there, I think, to juxtapose the way that Vanessa feels about it and also the way that the reader feels about it and to show you the difference between how when you're in a situation and when you're outside of that situation, you're gonna have two completely different perspectives. I also really think it serves the purpose to show you how manipulative strain actually is because while you're very much in Vanessa's head the entire time you're reading this book, you do also get a little bit of strain's perspective from her skewed lens, but at the same time, you do get to hear him every once in a while really say something that unfortunately makes a lot of sense. There were certain lines that he said in here where I found myself agreeing with him, which was disgusting and appalling, but like he wasn't wrong, but that was the point. While something can be right or wrong, it doesn't mean that there's no nuance in between there. And I do very much want to make clear that I'm in no way saying that anything Strain did was right. I'm just saying there were certain things he would say that you could rationalize because that was the point. You were supposed to understand the way that Vanessa was rationalizing some of the things that he would say because he wasn't only a manipulative liar, he would put some truth into his lies. He had some wisdom and insight sometimes um, and that's what made him so good at manipulating her. So yeah, this was truly um, a horrifying book to read. It was so disturbing and so upsetting very upsetting. I had to start reading something happy immediately after I finished it. But at the same time, like, I think it's a great book. I honestly think it's probably one of the most important things I've ever read. Um, and I don't want to say it's something I'd recommend to everyone to read because I don't really recommend this to everyone to read because if you've experienced any of the things in here, I don't think that reading it would necessarily be the best idea. But I'm also sure that like, if you had experienced some of the things that Vanessa's experienced, then like this book could be a little bit cathartic, honestly, but definitely also triggering. Be aware of the fact that this book is very graphic. All of the like sexual scenes were so, so difficult to read and just 
truly, utterly repulsing. But right now I'm kind of sitting at like a four stars for this. Honestly, it could be five, like 4.5 maybe. I don't want to say five because it's not like my favorite thing I've ever read because it's just, it's too disturbing for it to be something that's like my favorite thing I've ever read. But objectively, I, I do think this is like a five star book in every other respect. It's complex, it has a lot of depth and it has an ultimate message that I think is very, very important. So like all of those things are criteria for a five star book to me. Again, read with an understanding and knowledge of what's actually in here and what you're able to handle at the present moment. But I would recommend it for anybody who does not think that reading something like this is going to send them in a very negative spiral. All right, next up, the fourth That Girl book that I read was The Idiot by Ilif Batuman. This is another book that I would absolutely say would be at like the top of the like That Girl reading lists. It's her, Otessa Moshfeg, and Sally Rooney are like the holy trinity of That Girl fiction. <laughs> the Idiot follows the story of our main character who is a freshman at Harvard University and it takes place in like 1995, so it's like slightly historic. The book is slightly autobiographical, like it's very much much the author's own experience in some ways, but then fictionalized. So I was curious to see how I was going to like this book. Hello, so as you can tell, I'm outside. It's really nice and warm today and I was gonna go somewhere, but honestly I'm not in the mood to see other human beings, so I decided to just go in my backyard. I am sitting out here and reading The Idiot by Ilif Batuman. I'm currently um, like three quarters of the way through this book. I understand that the point of this book is that there isn't really a point, and so I get what the book is trying to do. However, I'm really bored. So <laughs> again, I'm not done with it. I will fully give you my thoughts when I finish it. But for now, I understand what people see in this. However, I really don't think I'm going to like this very much. Despite the fact that there are things about this that I find actually incredibly relatable, like the fact that the main character is the child of um, Turkish immigrants, that whole aspect of her life and that aspect of the story of how um, people treat her differently when they find out she was actually born in America and not born in Turkey. There are things about it that I definitely do enjoy. It's just that as a whole I find it incredibly boring and I know I've said that multiple times now but like I it's true. I just think that this isn't my type of book and that's fine but honestly I think my main issue with it is that it's just too dense. It's way too long and some of the descriptions of some things are just too detailed and unnecessary and again like it does sometimes serve a purpose to the entire book, but like I just think some of it needed to be cut out. It's actually a lot less pretentious than I thought it was going to be. I really feel like I don't have much to say about this and I feel bad because I know how many people really love this, but I, I just, I don't think it's my thing. But anyway, that's my update on The Idiot for now. I'm going to go and finish it since I am pretty close to the end now and I will come back and give you all my final thoughts once it's done. But to be honest, I really don't think my opinion will change very much. I don't like it. <laughs> this is honestly incredibly disappointing because um, of all of the books on this list, this was definitely one of the ones that I was expecting to like. For me, it was this and the final book that I'm going to read, so I'm really hoping that that doesn't disappoint me too, um, that were the two books that I had the highest expectations for and the books that I actually expected to fully enjoy. Shockingly, the two books that I expected to like the least have been my favorites and unfortunately, this one is not it for me. I feel like you're either really just going to see something in this or you will not care at all or you'll just hate it. I I don't hate it. I'm just never going to think about this again. If you like really dense, really tedious writing with um, no plot whatsoever, characters that don't have like much depth or like substance to them that are just kind of there to like move the story along even though there really isn't a story, <laughs> then you might like this. But I don't know. Like I said earlier, even though there were aspects of this that I could relate to, um, her early college life and stuff was somewhat relatable to me, and the whole child of immigrants thing, again, was another relatable aspect of this story to me. It's just like nothing happens in this book, and I know that that's the point of the book. It kind of just feels like a super long-winded diary entry. All that happens in this book is she starts school at Harvard, not that much interesting stuff happens while she's there, and then she ends up meeting some guy, falling for him. He is incredibly dull and a waste of her time, which is part of the point of the story, but it's not fun to read. <laughs> she just can't get over him and ends up rearranging things in her life to kind of spend some more time with him and more time around him, and it's just so boring. 
boring. <laughs> like it's just so, so boring to me. I feel so bad saying that, but like, again, I get what it's trying to do. I don't think it's for me and I don't really care. I've also heard people describe this book as like incredibly funny. And while there were lines here and there that I did find pretty humorous, overall, it didn't make up for the rest of it. It wasn't that funny. It's a very dry humor, I will say, and I do tend to like dry humor. To me though, in this, it just didn't land. There, there was just honestly nothing in here. Like nothing was going on the entire time. And if I wasn't filming this video, I would not have finished this book. I would have DNF'd this because Oh my god, I was bored out of my mind. <laughs> I don't think I've been this bored reading something in a really, really long time. The experience of reading this to me felt like, um, you know, when you're in high school and you have to get through a really bad required reading and it's some really boring book that you could not care less about, but you have to read it for a class. Like that's what reading this felt like. <laughs> and I don't ever want to feel that way when I'm reading a book. Reading shouldn't feel like a chore, but reading this felt like a chore. While the language was definitely accessible, it's just so dense. I know I said that before, but it's really really so dense. It's just too long, way too long. It's like 400 something pages and it could easily be a like 250 page book because nothing's going on anyway and all of the most substantial parts could have just been like summarized into um, a much shorter book. Hello, editing Hannah coming in really quickly because I forgot to mention that this book is also heavily inspired by Russian literature um, and it's a significant part of the story. I mean, the title, The Idiot, is named after a Dostoevsky novel of the same name. So the fact that it's super long and very tedious is meant to be reminiscent of Russian lit. So I understand what the author was trying to do. And so I think if you're really into Russian lit, you might have a better time with this. But as somebody who doesn't really know very much about it and isn't very interested in Russian lit in general, this was just like not as enjoyable for me. The thing is based on the premise and just like the concept and what this book is trying to achieve, I feel like I really should have liked it because I like kind of turning the idea of a coming of age novel on its head a little bit. Whereas in your stereotypical coming of age novel, you have have, like the main character go through a lot of changes in their life and experience a lot of new things and sometimes it can be like really intense and really wild and this was the complete opposite of that. It was slow and quiet and not much really happened in her life. She did have a few first-time experiences, new experiences, but overall not much happened to her, which I feel like is a very realistic take on what a lot of people's coming-of-age experiences are actually like. So I like that concept. It's just it was boring and I wish it wasn't. I feel like you could achieve the same thing with like just a little bit more plot, a little bit more depth to the characters. I felt like I didn't really know any of them and definitely in something much shorter and less dense. In terms of my enjoyment, I give this one star. Like I didn't enjoy it at all. I didn't have a good time, but because I think it actually does have some merit, it's like two stars for me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wish I liked it. I really wish I liked it, but I don't. <laughs> After those last two books, I was really thinking that this whole video was going to be pretty successful and I'd at least somewhat like every single book I read, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. <laughs> All right, and then lastly on my that girl reading list, um, I have the book that was on my own TBR and on my own reading list because it's by one of my favorite authors, and that is All About Love by Bell Hooks. This is the one book on this list that is actually nonfiction, um, but it is not a self-help book or a self-improvement book. It is a book about love. <laughs> Bell Hooks tragically passed away late last year, and she was one of my favorite feminist theorists and authors. I learned what feminism was through her writing and through her books. I read a lot of her writing in school and she was always one of my favorite feminist authors so I have wanted to read this for years and this book is essentially her um, theories, musings, ideas about love through a feminist lens and from a feminist perspective and she basically discusses how we as a society value love, um, how we approach love in our day-to-day -day relationships and what she thinks about love in our world and what it means for us. So yeah of every book on this list this was definitely the one that I was the most excited to read. Okay, hello. I just finished reading All About Love by Bell Hooks. I thoroughly enjoyed this. It was a great reading experience and I'm very glad that it lived up to my own hype for it. There are a couple like criticisms I have of this and just like a couple of things I wish I could have done differently. And what I mean by that is that I wish that I had read this a bit slower. I feel like this is the type of thing where I would like to just like read one chapter like a week and like contemplate it for a while, think about it a little bit more and just like take some 
notes and stuff like that but because I was reading it for this video I read this over like two days and I read it fairly quickly it wasn't that I wasn't paying attention it was just the type of thing that I like to take my time with a bit more but because I was reading it for the video and I couldn't take like three to four weeks to read this book I just couldn't like sit with my thoughts for as long as I wanted to so that's not the book's fault I just kind of wish that this was something I hadn't read for the sake of a video if that makes sense my other thing about this was that there were a couple sections and also just kind of like an underlying just like presence of um, her ideas about like religion and her own spirituality and religion and as somebody who isn't religious some parts of that were like a little bit difficult for me to connect with there were times where I actually really liked the way that she talked about it and it gave me a different perspective and it was really nice it's not that I have a problem with her being religious or the book having like religious content in it it just kind of took me out of the experience a little bit because like I don't look at things that way because sometimes it was like she was expecting you to approach it from the same like mindset that she has and I don't have that mindset or like outlook on life I felt like it kind of alienated me from like what she was trying to say because like I just I don't look at things that way so um yeah that was my only like criticism of it I guess I would say but it wasn't like the entire book by any means it was just like a few sections here and there and I guess from like the other work that I've read by Bell Hooks that's like less prevalent in those and this is more definitely more personal than some of the other work that I've read by her I think that that makes sense that it's present in here but personally like I said for me it just kind of took me out of the experience a little bit but overall as a whole I really enjoyed it I deeply appreciate her perspective on love. Um, it made me look at things differently. I feel like this book made me be a bit more thoughtful about how I approach love in my own relationships. And I also liked that it wasn't only about like romantic love, it was definitely about familial love and platonic love as well. And I loved the different types of like relationship dynamics that she explored. I really liked the section about um, abusive relationships and her perspective on the place of love in those types of relationships. I thought it was really thought provoking and um, really well written. The thing I really love about Bell Hooks's writing is that it's just so accessible and so easy to read. She's always just so clear and gets her point across so well that it's like impossible to not understand what she's saying. And yeah, I, I just overall, I don't have like that much to say about it. I definitely just think this is the type of thing that a lot of people should read, honestly. I think it'll make you think more deeply about love and its place in our world and in your own life. I would give this a four out of five stars, I think. Very solid book. Another new nonfiction favorite. I love finding new nonfiction I like because despite the fact that I don't read a lot of nonfiction, I actually do really like nonfiction. And this is another one that I will definitely be um, going back to for sure and recommending to plenty of people. But there you all have it. Those were the five books I read to see if I could become that girl. <laughs> Did I become that girl? Definitely not. I don't think I could ever be that girl. Props to anybody who can wake up at 5 a.m. every single day and can have their life put together in that way. I can't. I can't do that. It is not my thing, but I wish I could be like you. So yeah, um, this was a very interesting experience for me. I'm glad that I did it and I'm excited for my future experiment videos. I hope you guys are enjoying these experiment type videos. I've been having so much fun making them and I have so many more ideas that it's like overwhelming. I can't read everything fast enough, but I'm very excited to get to them and for you all to see them. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Let me know in the comments down below if there are any other experiment videos that you would like to see or any other books that you'd specifically like me to read, video ideas you have, whatever. Or if you just want to talk about these books or if you want to talk about anything, just let me know. I love talking to you all. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, I'm at clockwork underscore reads on everything. Um, all my links are in the description box as always. But again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye.